What's up guys, so a little bit of information to go along with this Dana 44 swap. So before you just decide you wanna go find one of these and put it in your truck, you have to evaluate a couple things. If you drive on the interstate a lot, this is not gonna be a swap you're gonna to wanna to do. I built mine for drifting. This is all for drifting. This is all I've ever wanted to do with this truck. I mean, realistically, I'm driving on the street too, but I built it to drift with. So that being said, the gear ratio or the final drive of the rear end is 4.3 stock is a 3.56 so what that means is that on the interstate your rpms are going to be up higher than what they were when you were cruising with the old rear end before i could cruise about 67 70 miles an hour doing about like you know 1500 2000 rpms now when i'm on the interstate i'm up almost 3000 um granted that'll change a little bit with tire ratio size going up uh, i'm going to change that but yeah so this isn't something that i'm just going to be able to drive around all over the fucking place on the interstate anymore unless i just feel like cruising at 3000 rpms all day so that's something i wanted to kind of make you guys aware of granted it is a stronger rear axle it has four three gears so it accelerates a little bit faster um you know it's got disc brakes it's got um you know all the good shit that you want it has lsd but i welded it so fuck the lsd um but, you know, I just wanted to make you guys aware that, you know, if you do put this Dana 44 in your rear, in your truck and you do some of the stuff I do, it's not going to be the same way it was on the interstate. So, um, that being said, really only a couple things for this. You need the whole rear end assembly with the brakes, everything on it. Um, you need the, uh, this is my new Sequoia wheels, my burner for the back. But, uh, yeah, you are going to need the whole rear end itself. Uh, the brakes obviously all that parking brake cables you're gonna need the e-brake handle you're gonna i added a proportioning valve because like i said um or maybe i didn't say stock the truck doesn't come with a proportioning valve I added one in there from willwood uh that i also deleted the rear abs line uh or the rear abs module going to the back i deleted the return line from the load sensing valve from the rear to the front and then i deleted the load sensing valve itself and I will make a little video about that. You can kind of see. Let's see. That's the line I ended up having to plug off to uh, basically that little brass line where you see that plug. That's where you're going to remove the line from all the way back to the axle. And uh, yeah. So uh, the video is going to kind of jump around a lot. Um, I, it took me quite a different quite a few different days and different sets of hands to get this all done i had to order two different sets of uh leaf spring bushings but all in all it did get done i'm sorry for the wait guys um i made it to my first drift event uh took it out of shenandoah speedway and I, i'm trying to get caught up to that point because i want to be able to release content as i do it not go to an event and then a week or two later drop some fucking content because that's not the way i want to run this channel but i am busy so i do apologize um I need to get my formatting down a little bit my editing skills and my i guess you could say my organization of my videos down because i have I, dude i've got like fucking four hours of footage but it's all just random stuff and i didn't unfortunately like for this you're gonna see i didn't record me installing the rear end back in it's just me dropping it out everything you need for it and so on and so forth so you'll just see this video take this video and what you see me do it's pretty cut and dry you just have to re do it backwards so you'll just put the rear end in lift it up into place using the leaf springs and then connect everything and it's pretty simple and then you got to do all the other shit like the proportioning valve and you know e-brake cables and it does take a little bit it's a little bit of finagling but it's very much worth it especially if you're trying to drift this thing so appreciate y'all for sticking around i know it's been a while but i got something coming for y'all for 300 uh subscribers and you know over overall i've probably got like over 3,000 followers subscribers over different things so Appreciate you guys. Sorry it's been a while, but here's some damn content for you. All right, so I got both of the axles out. As you can see, piece of shit hard body axle. See you in a days. Then the 44 is all prepped and ready to go. So, this came out of a 95 Zuzu Rodeo. Uh, in this case, V6 uh, four wheel drive manual. And I took, all in all, I have the e-brake handle, the cables obviously, all of the hydraulic system off the rear axle, uh, including, I, these are the stock calipers. As you can, 
You can see a little bit of the old heat, but I took them off, spent the whole time cleaning them up, put new rotors and everything on them. And, uh, but yeah, basically, the, the whole reason you want this is, by the way, axle, axle code G80 is what you're looking for. Uh, you can find it on the VIN tag inside the, inside the hood. Uh, but basically, as opposed to this, as you can see, this is drum brakes, not desirable. Disc brakes, um, it was LSD. I mean, it still is technically, but I plated it with half inch plate and uh, had my buddy Jeb welded up in there. So I don't really have to worry about that breaking. So now it's a welded on both side differential. Um, and then four, three gear ratio. So it's gonna accelerate a lot more aggressively than with the three, five, six. Um, so it's gonna be do a lot more of what I want it to do for gripping. And the only difference between the axles as far as width wise is this one's I think about 58 and a half inches. That one's about 59. But uh yeah, I mean it's actually gonna help me out fitment wise and bring them in a little bit closer to flush. And then you gotta make sure you grab the back yoke off the drive shaft of the rodeo to fit on here because that's different. Here. Basically, but, first thing you gotta do is take your e-brakes off. Up front, there's a little, which, as you can see, I did this yesterday. I'm just, uh, my apologies for not fucking recording that. Oh, that was reckless. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, but basically, they both, both of the e-brakes go from the rear back here up to a little junction here. And on the junction, let's see this little swing up. Okay, there, show you. Retrospectively, I should have just gone and got my GoPro to do all this, but whatever. Please don't drive shaft. Okay, so as you can see, here's one piece of it. It was connected to this little swing arm. And on the end of this, this little nut, there's a little U bracket that connects the e-brake cable together. So basically you just take it apart. And the e-brakes fall out. You can move them out the way. And then, next step is to take this drive shaft off. As you can see, I've already taken the bolts out, but it's switched in there pretty good. But, check this out. This is good stuff here. Oh my god. I'm an idiot for not using my GoPro. Oh, there goes dirt, dirt bikes. Check this shit out. Yeet! So, that motherfucker's been missing the whole time the 520 some odd miles I've driven my truck and I've been ripping on it recently. So, that's not good. I'm definitely gonna go buy some new U-joints, make sure I got all my clips securely in there and um, basically you can use this drive shaft from what I understand. I obviously will find out, but you have to use the yoke from the Azuzu rear end. Oh, sweet. My light's getting ready to die. Huh? There's a lot in there this type of board. There it goes, holy shit. So yeah, um, basically got the e-brake cables off, got the drive shaft disconnected. To disconnect this ABS sensor right here, which is my wheel speed sensor. But if my speedometer doesn't work anymore, oh well. And then we'll do Probably gonna drop it, the whole thing as a unit. So take the shocks off and then drop the leaf springs and with the leaf springs will come the whole rear end. Oh, I gotta drain the brakes too. I'm gonna do that real quick. Also, speaking of which, I'm gonna do the proportioning valve on a separate video because I need to delete the load sensing valve on the proportioning valve and, or do that at the same time. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that later why, but... Alright, let me get out of here for this fucking mic getting me a seizure. Right. 
So doing this, so obviously you got your ABS connector you have to pull off here, but your disc brake from my, okay, so for 95, short bed, four cylinder, two wheel drive, and some of the other hard bodies, I think four cylinder, or four wheel drive is the exception. Well, I didn't even pronounce that right, but whatever. It doesn't have a brake proportioning valve when it has this load sensing valve in there. Basically the load sensing valve is to, uh, you know, when you put a bunch of weight in the back of the truck, it increases rear brake pressure. So that way it makes it easier to stop and doesn't feel like you're, the rear end's pushing the truck forward. But they don't have a proportioning valve on the truck because of that. So what I'm gonna do is just disconnect it here I'm gonna take this soft line off here, and for now, I'm just gonna let it drain. And when I put the new one in there, it's probably when I'm gonna do the load sensing valve. Or I might change my mind and just do it midway through, you know, once I got the axle down. But yeah, I'm just gonna let it drain overnight and then come out here tomorrow, I'll drop this axle down and uh, go from there. Got all that out of the way. I'm gonna do the rear poly bushings because mine are fucked. The fronts won't come down on the, the front leaf springs won't come down. My perches are bent and uh, when they were re-drilled, they kind of seized themselves to the bushing. So you know what? It's not worth the trouble. Gonna leave the fronts in, change the bushings on the back and uh, get this thing up in there. Get it going. All right, so one thing I did have to do is I had to re-drill. This is probably about the only thing custom you have to do other than the rear yoke is you do have to drill these leaf spring perch holes out for the drop blocks the hard bodies and these belt tape blocks are bigger than the rodeos factory but you see got my new four inch blocks in there josh is over here heating up this bushing and trying to get that one out we already got this one out As you can see the inside is pretty okay but it was oblong that's so as you can see here i've got the old leaf springs got that one there and then this one over here i got them just set on each side respectively so that way i don't get them mixed up the front perch holes are obviously bigger than the backs and mine is relocated so um i ran into a couple problems while i was doing this the bolts were all seized into all of the uh leaf spring bushings of course i got it out and found out that the new bushings i had were in fact the wrong size and actually find that out until I got the old ones out. The way I ended up having to remove these, as you can see, there's melted rubber all over it. I had to burn them out with a torch. Um, I, I actually had to go as far as uh, chopping both, both the bolt head and the nut, and it took a lot of finagling and wiggling and stuff like that. My leaf spring perches were bent together, so I had to, I was gonna cut them anyways because of the re-drill, but, uh, just give me another reason to I'm gonna leave this here so I can hit the inside bends and throw sparks. But uh, yeah, it's really a pain. So uh, personally, I'm gonna anti seize everything, putting it back together. But this bolt was seized to the collar, therefore it wouldn't allow me to remove the. You know, I could pull the nut off, but I I could hit it with a big old maul, and the bolt wouldn't come out at all. Heat it up with a torch, do whatever I had to do. So I had to cut everything off, bang them out and then melt them out and so now we're here at this point 
Um, word of advice, personally, I freeze my bearings. I've had them in the freezer all day at work. Or not bearings, but bushings. I've had them in the freezer all day at work. That way they shrink up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to put in here. I'm gonna go ahead and continue freezing them while I clean out these holes. And um, yeah, I'll show you all how I get them in here. I'm gonna use my vise. Granted, it's a ghetto setup, but it's something I can take mobile. And I'm going to a trip to that next weekend if I can get all this done and the big truck prepared. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the leaf spring perch bushing holes out and make sure there's nothing stuck on there or you know that's gonna make this even more difficult grease these up and then we're gonna press them in with the vise these knackles are basically welded to the bolts like mine this is what you're gonna have to do i'm trying to have exactly but the collars that the leaf spring bushing rod go in there um so i gotta set up in the vise here i get a little vise and i actually have <coughs> two sets Energy, energy suspension bushing kits that I ordered um, just so I could make sure I did order the right ones. However, I can see why there's a lot of discrepancy all over the place. Um, so, as you can see, this is the front bushing for the leaf spring from the kit that doesn't include all of these collars, right? This kit's called the Complete Shackle Kit and it's labeled as a 4x4. This is labeled as two-wheel drive and four by four so but you can see the difference in these two kits here so those are both of the leaf spring bushing centers you can see that one's a little bit slit and that's a little bit larger the reason this one is larger is because it comes with new collars however this kit is made so that it uses the bolts here i believe that's why it's slit and cut like that so it doesn't seize the bolt as the old ones did and comes with these collars that are to replace these. It's a really nice fit on there and you can see there's a little bit of a difference when I put this one on here. So even though that one's more of a uh, like you know it has more pieces in the kit itself. Um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one and throw some some silicone grease on there. Make it a little bit easier to get in and uh, yeah, I'll show you some footage. I'm um, pressing them in, I'm gonna use the vise. And then uh, I'll also throw in this little clip of me breaking this collar off of here so you can see exactly what method I'm doing if you need to do it. And here we go. Too noisy. Wow, let me shut the fuck up. That's what I get. Sorry, boy. We're banned. So this isn't necessarily something that's always very easy. It does take a little bit of work and effort. But there she goes. Yes, sir. Mm. 
That's that, boys and girls. Next thing to do is just go ahead and put the new collars on here and press the leaf spring bushings into the springs. So, we'll do that. All right, so real quick, you can see what I'm doing, how I'm getting them in here. My dumb ass, I had them frozen, and I turned the fucking power off the garage so they're not frozen anymore. So, we're just pressing them in, good old fashioned way. Who gives a shit? That one's in there. Nice. I'll go ahead and pull that out. Got the red ones in there. Got them in here. I'll show you getting this last one in. And then this is the other spot where the bushings go. Up in there, you got one on this side, one on that side, two on the other side. And then we're gonna go ahead and probably just be able to get those in with a hammer and some grease. So go ahead and get them in there. Go All right, ahead. so my GoPro is super dead and dying. It's on four percent, but I'll show you what I'm doing while I'm trying to charge it. So I got that line removed from the little block up front. You see, I'm fishing it out of here, and it's a pain in the ass. All of these little oh no, where's my light? You see, these brackets are up on top of the frame under the cab. So it's really a motherfucker to get, but we're making progress. I'm trying to get it out. I got it back to here already. So just a little bit more to get it out at the load sensing valve. Once this line is gone, the load sensing valve will be gone. I'll tee the line that went to the load sensing valve, or you know, the, the one that goes from the front brakes to the rear brakes. I'm sorry. That was kind of backwards, but whatever. Uh, the line that, basically the primary line that goes back to the load sensing valve is the one that I'm gonna basically just hook right up to the T on the back of the axle and run it that way. And once I do that, all I have to do is put my proportioning valve in at the front and bleed the brakes and that's load sensing valve deleted. But I'm finished getting this pain in the ass line out. You can see where I deleted the ABS and uh yeah finish getting this line out these brackets are going to be the death of me but yeah get it out we'll be done and uh hopefully my gopro decides it wants to charge you can see i got that side over there by the way big shout out to josh for helping me out today fucking came doing help out a lot so that that side's already done i got it torqued down to like 62 foot pounds uh that's going to be the front or no i'm sorry that's the front and we're basically going to spin it and flip it when we go to put it in. That way we can just kind of pivot it, put the bolts in the front, and then pick it up, put it in the back. But I already got that side together, and we'll throw this one together real quick and go from there. Okay, so that's kind of where all the footage I have stops, unfortunately. Um, but, nevertheless, I can pretty much review and tell you guys, it works great. It's very strong rear end. Um, you know, it's like I said, it kind of can't drive on the interstate anymore, but eh, I drive around town mostly and I'm, I trailer it to events. 
because I beat on it hard enough that I, if I break it, I just want to be able to tow it home. I don't want to worry about that. So I'll kind of show you guys what it looks like overall. So you can see the rear ends here. It's all hooked up. It's good to go. Um, it, this is a stock car body drive shaft on this end right here. This is the rodeo yoke in and it works fine. Uh, it's welded, super strong. I was fucking putting this thing in second gear and from a dead stop, revving it up, dumping the clutch from roasting the tires and spinning around. So I can tell you it's plenty strong. Um, I got my four inch that unfortunately I didn't get angled blocks. So my pinion angle is off a little bit. Um, but yeah, those are the four inch blocks. They, it's still, I have no problem with like drive shaft noise or really anything like that. It just feels like a welded dip now. But, um, you know, I got my Beltec Street Performance shocks bolted right up to everything. Those are the purchase from the hard body at the bottom. Um, you know, the, the brakes, that system ended up working out great. It definitely stops like on a dime now. Um, you can see back there, everything's torque striped because, I, like I said, I took it to a drift event. And this thing is proven now. I know this fucking truck rips. Uh, my ABS not plugged up. Like I said, Speedo doesn't really work at all. But fuck that. I don't care. Um, I'm under the truck, so hold on. I'm trying to get back here to the load sensing valve. Oh, shit. I'm kind of stuck on one. Okay, I should have done this from the get-go, but I had the door closed trying to prevent noise, but whatever. So, you can see, load sensing valve is no longer there. Deleted that. Uh, I've got my hard line there. Let's see. See it? Yeah, whatever. It's kind of haggard, but it works. All the paint came off of it. From, I had to bend it kind of a lot, but it went straight into the hard line. Uh, this is the T that came from the rodeo. All of the brake system that came from the rodeo. Uh, oh, the calipers, everything. You can see, did the... Uh, all the bushings. Sorry, garage is kind of a wreck right now, but whatever. Uh, filled it up to pretty much right underneath where it's coming out. And uh, yeah, it, this thing fucking is awesome, dude. I did rip off uh, my gas tank shield and kind of got the gas tank a little bit. The e brake cable, you can see I got the e brake cables going across. Let me show you all that. I have no exhaust anymore because I ripped it off coming off the trailer. That was fucking cool. But, you know, whatever. It's also how I destroyed my gas tank shield. If y'all seen my Instagram story, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. I think it was ripped off and destroyed. Oh. Okay, and this is kind of the last thing I'm going to crawl around and show y'all. Um, so you can see I have the ABS is deleted and the splice is in line there. It doesn't really move, so I don't have to worry about it fire breaking apart or anything. And then this is a stock e-brake cable from the Isuzu. Uh, that bracket I made, I pretty much just put a bolt in on top of the tunnel and then bent this little piece of steel that I had. It was actually a bracket from the, it was like a piece of the old e-brake off the hard body. And I kind of cut it off, heat it up, did some fucking forging and like you know bent it flat and then bent it at a 90 degree angle drilled some holes in it and here we are works pretty good so yeah but uh that's there everything works pretty good fucking good man i'm so honestly i'm so proud of myself i'm glad i took this on this whole truck is it turned out to be exactly everything i fucking wanted and more and i love it and Man, if y'all trying to drift, get you some good tires because my Achilles blew apart in two seconds. I had some Iron Mans and these fucking Federal 595s are badass. Now I got some Accelerator 651s coming in. But uh, here's my Willwood setup. Yeah, I know it's a lot of adapters and shit, but what I didn't know is this is not actually bubble flare. This is three, I think it's three, 24 pitch thread. Um, it's Japanese standard regular fucking brake line and then this ended up being bubble flare on both sides so um i had to do the 3 8 24 adapter to a 10 millimeter bubble flare line i think that's a bubble no yeah that's oh so that's an adapter this is 3 8 24 on that end and 10 millimeter bubble on this side and then a 10 millimeter bubble adapter and 
uh, into that adapter is the 3 8 regular Japanese brake line. So all in all, do yourself a favor and make sure you get the one with the right thread pitch. It's not this exact Willwood with 10 millimeter bubble flare or your brake system could be different on your hard body, I don't know. But this was kind of a bitch. Um, but in the end, it worked out great. And I had to make a little bracket there, you can see. Made a bracket so it doesn't move around. And yeah, dude, this fucking truck rips. Super proud of everything. I'm sorry it took so long to make this video. It was a uh, definitely a long process. I took it to Shenandoah Speedway, uh, did an event with Swing Set LLC, and I actually got a bunch of dope shit from them. Like, uh, see, I got some, got a couple of stickers, like the actual Swing Set sticker. Got two of those. Then I got this one. It's pretty fucking dope too. And what I'm most stoked about is this Shenandoah circuit run, uh, basically like a replica of an Abisu driver's pass. And they give these out to new drivers at Swing Set. And, you know, I, I rolled up. Obviously I'd never met Jason before, shout out to him. And uh, showed a lot of love, give me that. Those people that are awesome and I can't wait to go back. But this thing fucking reps, dude. Um, you know, honestly, boost is a little bit higher than I thought it was. My tuner told me it was kind of like 15 PSI, which it is, but it creeps up to like 20. So I don't know how long it's going to last, especially because I can't stay out of it, but we're going to find out and I'm going to let y'all know. So honestly, thinking about it, I might turn the boost down a little bit, but, uh, yeah, man, y'all still watching. Appreciate y'all for sticking through. Um, I know I still got a lot to work on as far as videos and editing and shit like that, but I'm trying to do what I can. Um, and I think I'm getting a little bit better every time, but this one just took a little bit too long. The next one won't be that long. Appreciate y'all. Later.